All right, welcome back, everyone. And today we're going to do another uh, uh, WebGL lesson. Today we're going to do WebVR. Um, if you have a Vive or uh, some other device, you may be able to use it. I'm trying a different format today just to see how, how well it works out. So, um, so the first thing you're going to need is a version of Chromium that works with the Vive. Uh, it's an experimental build, as you can see, and you just have to, you know, just download, install it. And uh, just follow the instructions that's uh, on the screen. Um, the other thing you might have to do when you install it is you have to uh, enable WebGL 2.0 because that's what we're using uh, in development. So you're going to need those two things set up. And hopefully once you have those two things set up, you will, should have everything working. You can try this page out to make sure everything works. And uh, Hopefully with this, you'll see the information coming from the HMD, your Vive headset or whatever, you know, VR headset you have, uh, you can use for development. So there you go. So we're all set up. So we're going to switch over to the code editor. And um, we're going to first thing we're going to do is uh, do some changes in the gl.js file. So one of the small, there's only one small change uh, in the set size function. We're going to save the width and height of um, the change that we're doing because we need now we need to kind of be able to change back and forth the canvas because the way Web uh, VR works with WebGL is that it um, basically you kind of draw to the canvas and then you push that frame to the headset and you just do it like 90 times per second or higher because uh, in um, vr you kind of need to stay at a 90 frames per second so um i had to do a couple of things to keep the the frame rate at a good pace where you know things don't look uh, crazy in the headset so that's one of the first things we need to keep track of the actual size, you know, we want to keep a, a nice reference to the size. So the next change we're going to do, um, how about we do the render loop? Yeah, let's do the render loop. In the render loop, I added a, a new property called the frame caller. Um, the thing is to push frames to the headset, you need to use um, the request animation frame from the headset itself or from the VR object and not um, from the window itself. So right here I have the default set as the window frame caller and on you know just go to every line that that calls it like uh, like line 33 I have that commented out and I added um, this uh, frame caller dot request animation uh, another line right here that needs to be updated and one more down here. And in this object, we added in set frame color. So this way, when the VR object is ready, we will then replace window with the VR um, object. So that's the render loop change that we had to do. Um, now we have to do sp special render functions um, because to render to uh, HMD, you need to render twice. You need to render for the left eye and the right eye. And the idea is that um, you split the canvas in half and um, you draw half and half. You know, you kind of draw the left eye on half of the canvas and draw uh, the right eye on the other half of the canvas. So uh, let's go to our grid floor. And under render, we'll create this new function called uh, render VR. And it's pretty much the same thing. Um, the only difference is these two parts uh, of drawing. So it, right here, we're going to split the viewport uh, in half. And this would be the left side. And we push to our uh, shader the, the left projection matrix. Instead of using the camera projection, the, the VR headset itself will give us a projection matrix for each eyeball. So, um, so we push the projection, the left projection matrix and the left view matrix. So that's kind of like the camera matrix as well. So it's kind of like where you kind of are, um, like where the head is currently, it's kind of like head tracking. So 
that's where the head tracking um, ma- uh, matrix comes from. And that's the projection. So we, you know, mold everything around us. And same thing here. Um, this is the right side. And that's all really we're doing here. So, so if we go to the shader class, we do the exact same thing. We build our uh, render model VR, and we pass in our model and pass in our VR. Um, uh, same thing, you know, drawing the left side, split the viewport, pass in the left projection, right projection. Um, the one thing I did notice with web with doing VR is like I might need to make a, like a rendering object, uh, something that can hand like it can swap in and out. Use a regular renderer or a VR renderer, because um, the VR renderer these like uh, I recently refactor in the original beginning we uh, made these kind of like global, and recently refactored the shader code where it's no longer global. You kind of just de- predefine them when you need them. Uh, for web VR, we kind of need these to kind of be predefined globally. So I need to come up with some kind of way to be able to swap back and forth, back and forth between a regular camera and a VR camera. Um, so, but like I said, this is the same thing. We're splitting the viewports and we're passing in the the matrices that we need to um, render each eye. So. That handles shaders, grid view floors, GL, uh, render loop. Now we're going to the actual VR object itself. Um, Web VR uses um, something called promises. Uh, it's something kind of new to me uh, in JavaScript. I really never used promises in JavaScript before. But if you're in, if you ever program in C sharp, it's kind of like um, async and await functionality. It's kind of like threading, uh, in a nice simple way of threading. Um, uh, promises are, are futures, so it's kind of like uh, you run a function and you're promising in the future you're going to get a value. Um, so the idea is you kind of do this and it kind of runs kind of in its own thread independently and it does like a callback for you. So that's how WebGL, uh, WebVR works. Um, so to do that, we kind of have to do a couple of things because sometimes to initialize the headset, it takes like a second or two. So um, I thought, you know what? Let's if it if it, use, it if it uses promises, let's go all the way and really use promises. Um, so we're gonna have two functions. We're gonna have the VR in it, which kind of starts up um, like kind of the whole promising pro- uh, setup for the web VR. And then we have VR instance. It's very much like our GL instance, where I just grab the GL context and then just append um, functionality to that object. Instead of creating a wrapper, I'm just kind of dynamically extending that object. And I decided to do the exact same thing with the VR object. Uh, the VR object is uh, it's called the VR display object. And it's pretty much just the, the HTMD that you're going to use. So. So when we call the VR in uh, in it, we're going to create a promise, and um, you know resolve and reject means you know successful or failure. So we kind of d- determined um, how to call it, and one of the first things we got to do is check to see like right here navigator get VR displays. We're testing to see if this op- this property exists in navigator. Um, if it doesn't exist, that means your browser just does not support WebVR at all. So we call it reject, and that's it. We're done. Um, if it does exist, um, then we got to call navigator got um, get VR displays. Now this returns a promise, and normally with a promise you would then call a then function to kind of say, okay, well, when whenever you're done processing that function call, here's what you do with it. Um, now the thing is that I'm using this as a load up thing, uh, as a load up, and and this and I have my own promise to begin with, so my wrapper promise is not going to wait for that promise, like you know, it, you know. Uh, so I'm using resolve. So that means I'm going to wait here until the VR is ready. So so this so I'm not waiting for this promise to kind of finish on its own. I'm going to sit here and actually wait for it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sitting and waiting for um, this promise to be executed. And when it's done, 
I want, you know, the the then function has a resolve and a reject. So if it's successful and I, I have like a, uh, some VR displays that I can use, um, I'm going to call VR instance and I'm going to pass in my GL context that I, got, I brought in from VR, uh, the init. I'm going to pass in the array, um, which is the, the arrays of HMDs or the array of VR um, displays that are available to you. And I'm going to continue to pass the resolve and the reject because I want VR instance to finish my promise. So this promise will be continued off into this function, and it w this function would actually finish the promise and set up the HMD. Uh, if for some reason your HDMI is turned off or not plugged in, um, we get the error. We then we just call the reject and just give it, tell it a message saying unable to get an HDMI reference because you know it's not plugged in or something. All right, so that's our init. Now we go into our uh, VR instance. There's not a lot that that's in here. So, um, so here's our instance. We're passing our GL. We're passing in our array of. Um, VR displays, and we're going to continue our promise. We're going to continue prom um, ac um, you know, uh, working our promise. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see is there a length. If the you know if if there's a length of zero, then there's no a no HD uh, no HMDs. There's no headsets. Let me just call them headsets. It's better than doing these acro acronyms. So we're just going to finish our promise and just say you know there's a problem. Now, if there is a length greater than zero, let's check the first one because you're not going to have a lot of, I, seriously, they're going to have like 15 headsets or 10 heads or even two headsets plugged into one computer in all honesty, unless you're like a VR developer that has like everything under the sun, which I, I'm, you know, I'm not a VR developer. I've only have one headset. So, um, and I think most of you will have just one headset. So I'm just going to grab the first one. And, um, you know, if, if you, you know, probably the smarter thing is to loop through and find one that's currently connected because there is a connected uh, attribute. But I'm not going to bother because if, if, if we got a length, I, we're good. You know, we, there, there's a headset connected. We're, we're good enough. We don't have to go too far. So what we're going to do is check its ca um, capabilities and can it present. Ca uh, present is a function in the... Um, VR display that actually pushes the frames to the display on your um, headset. So it's asking, can this headset actually have um, frames pushed to it? Um, if it does not, because I have the exclamation point, there you go. Um, we just reject. I mean, if we you know we error out this promise and we give it this error message. And so now, if we do have a headset and it can present, now let's start building our. Um, H, um, our headset uh, object. So we're gonna push in, or we're gonna save our, uh, you know, our object to HMD for now, because this is the, this is what we're gonna return, um, and it, at the end. And the next thing we're gonna do, we're going to get the left and right parameters because we need to um, be able to render the left and right uh, eye, and so we need the, the resolution of that. So let's, let's we're gonna get the information for each eye. Uh, we're gonna save the reference to GL. Um, depth in near, this is, uh, you know, if you remember in the lessons we did, we uh, did about cameras and projections and we did the perspective, um, projection matrix, we had to determine at what point do things get clipped or what thing, at what point things don't render at all. So we're going to do point one for the closest distance from the camera. You don't want anything too close to the camera. So this is, that's, you know, this works really well. And depth is how far you can see before uh, nothing renders at all. So it's a pretty far distance you should be able to see. Um, the next thing we're going to do is grab, create a, um, a hold, holding spot for uh, called VR frame data. And what this is, is kind of like an object that you kind of pass in to uh, an, um, get frame data function that's part of the VR display object, which then fills it up with that information I showed you at the very beginning where you see all the matrix information, the left projection. You can see all the information coming from the headset. That's what the VR frame data is from that one scene. Um, 
So we're not getting the, this is just kind of like a holder. Um, th this is kind of like we're passing by reference and that data gets filled in uh, every frame. <clears throat> now the next thing we're gonna do is, now that we have the left and right, we're going to calculate the, the render width and the render height. Um, since the left and right eyes are usually the half size of a screen, you know, we'll take the maximum width and multiply by two. Um, you know, since, you know, the whole screen is actually half and half, so it's just like, just multiply by two. It's, it's, it does seem to work. And then for render height, it's just whichever is the highest one. So now we're going to add some new custom functions to it. So one of some of these custom functions is HMD. We're going to do the F update. And this F update, all it does is get our frame data. So we can get the position of the headset. Uh, we get a projection, you know, all that. Um, and the next function we have is toggle pre present presenting. And all this thing does is check to see checks to see if we're actually presenting. And don't forget, we're we're updating, we're creating um, new functions to the VR display object. So now we can see just this um, is presenting. So is presenting. Is it uh, currently um, getting frames from your web page? If it um, if it's not, start. If it is, stop it. That's it. And um, these, and then here's the start and stop. And these are um, promises as well. So like I said, web VR uses promises for a lot of its uh, functionality. Um, so what we're going to do is this request pr present, we're going to pass in our GL canvas because that will be basically our texture. That'll be our frame. So when we're done drawing on it, we push it to the headset. So this is, you know, really the meat and butter because everything we've done up till now with web v, uh, WebGL is is going to work because we're just drawing to that canvas and at the very end all this object does is um, you know all it does is just push it to the headset uh, and you know we just do the error messages and you know we just put some good stuff on the console just just for debugging for now so we got that now we're going to do some event handling and we're almost done this like i said there's really not a lot to uh web vr um so there's actually a lot of events and some of these like none of these ever trigger for me so i don't i didn't bother to wire them up but i left them here just in case down the line they do start working or i'm just not using them correctly um i did read a couple of them like uh, like uh connect and disconnect um, is when the, the headset turns itself on and off, but that doesn't seem to work for my Vive. So, you know, like I said, none, these don't seem to work for me, but I, I left the list here, you know, just for, for future reference. But the one thing that does really work is present change. Um, back up here, when start presenting um, fully executes and, you know, by the time this message um, displays, it will actually trigger this event. So, so when start presenting is done and it's successful, this is the function that gets called afterwards. So when the state of presenting changes, uh, we're gonna check what we're gonna do. So if the headset is presenting, let's check to see if it has an external display, which it, it should because it's a headset. And um, you know we're going to save the current GL um, width and height. So this way we can undo it later. And then we're gonna set the GL canvas to our render width and height. So this way we can render exactly. And if you don't set the size and you keep the GL uh, thing, the text is very blurry, um, not the text, everything you render is very pixelated because um, it's too small for the resolution of the headset. So, because it gets blown up. So that's why we need to set the um, resolution. Um, in an event that we toggle it off, again, we're just checking to see if it has whatever. It's just validation. And then we set everything back to what we saved originally. And then when we're done, we do a resolve. And that's just com that completes our, um, whatchamacallit, that completes our promise. Now we're going to, now we're getting to the very end of this. Now we're going to our HTML page. Um, 
I probably didn't mention, but this file is our vr.js file. So um, in our viewer, we're going to add our vr.js file, and we're going to have our global VR object. Now in our add event listener, um, I still have cam. All this stuff, all this stuff is actually not being used right now. Uh, ignore this because that's just my old code, and uh, I didn't clean this up uh, before apparently. So, um, so here we go. We're going to create our promise to actually generate everything. And once we have our promise and everything is successful, we're going to save our HMD value into uh, GVR. And we're going to set that as the frame caller. Remember, we, we updated, um, uh, what was it, render loop for this. And if it, in case there's an error, there's a problem. So um, in, right here, we have promise all. And then you put an array of all the promises. So basically, I'm going to stop until all my promises are done. Uh, I did this this way because I'm thinking about doing resources as promises with VR. Um, so this way I can load up textures and whatever else, and I can set up VR at the same time. So this way I have them both kind of running independently of each other. And when both are completely done, then we move on to our unready state. So this way we already, no, we got the VR set up, we got our texture, you know. That's what I want to do, but I need to rebuild uh, the resources object with promises. So, but like I said, I'm setting this up for the future. So this way I can just add, you know, um, resource promise. And then when resources are done downloading and the VR set up, we're good to go. So with VR all set up and ready, we go to the on ready event. Um, what we're going to do is set up a global uh, key press handler. If it's the space bar, we're going to toggle on and off to presenting. Um, this is the shader from our previous lesson, so nothing has changed. And I apparently am still setting the camera projection matrix, but this is kind of a waste. It's no big deal because um, we're going to set this for every frame because we're going to get the a new projection matrix for uh, every frame of uh, the rendering. And we have our model. This is we're just I'm just building a cube and setting it really small because when I'm in the headset, every, everything is huge. So uh, there's a scale issue I need to kind of figure out in the long run. And then we just start off our uh, render loop. And here's our render loop. So, uh, you know, we do our clear. We do our VR update, which just gets our frame data. Um, our grid floor, we just render it with our new render function. Um, our shaders, we do a pre-render, and then we again, we just render with our new VR, um, render function. And if we're currently presenting, submit this frame. Because we're now done rendering, we're going to submit this frame. And uh, you know, I'll just show you the shaders. This is the previous shader, so I haven't changed anything. Everything's still the same. Um, in case you're kind of new or you, missed, you didn't do the last one. I'll just show you the code so you can uh, just copy and paste it. And don't forget, everything is on GitHub. So, um, and that's it. That's all the code. And now if I switch over to the browser, now here is our um, stuff. And now I'm moving around our headset. And these are the two eyes. And I'm not even presenting yet. Um, and this is just the standard uh, gate. Uh, I don't know. This is the standard um, GL canvas that we're drawing to. Everything's nice and even. Um, so I need to take off my glasses. And uh, now I press the space bar. And boom. And you notice the resolution changed. Um, that's because now, like I said, this is now a much bigger canvas that we're rendering to. Um, very big. You know, let me scroll to the left, and there is our thing. So if I were to put this headset on, ooh, what the hell is in here? Ah, technical difficulties. Ooh, -hoo. and um, that's it. I have our grid space. Ooh, clearly close to the mic. Uh, our grid space, I can see it. Looks kind of cool. I wish I could touch it. I can't touch it. And there's our lovely little cube. Um, and that's it. 
and uh, it works. <laughs> it really is not a lot to it um, to actually add a VR support. Um, there really isn't. Um, and if I press spacebar, and we just get out of presenting mode, and everything is back to normal. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, Tada! Web VR. Um, so uh, I did. I thought this lesson might be cool because um, I'm looking at a lot of lessons of Web VR, but they they are mostly how to use. Web VR with existing things like 3JS and uh, Mozilla has something called A Frame. So everyone has this wrapper of um, how to access with Web VR. And in this lesson, I'm not doing that. I, don't, I didn't want to do a wrapper. I want well, basically we are building a wrapper actually, but I'm showing you all the steps of actually accessing the Web VR API. And at this point, that we're, we're done. There's really not much else to Web VR. Uh, when dealing with the uh, headset. Everything after this is just pure WebGL. Um, the only thing I might have to do is um, the Vive controllers, but that is in a game controller object. So that may be another lesson, uh, me trying to figure out how to get access to the Vive controllers and maybe do a little something with that. Um, uh, yeah, so I have like a notes. So I, have a, I've, I need to do a lot of stuff, and uh, so at the, in the next lesson, I was actually thinking about doing like a room scale, kind of just building a box, uh, maybe just like doing like a new, like a VR grid where um, the the grid gets gets created to the exact size of uh, the room, the room space you have for like Vive. Um, and also definitely want to do the Vive controllers. And I was thinking about just maybe shooting squares, you know, just, making them fly away from the controller. You know, have a controlling a cube and when you press it, it'll shoot uh, clones of cubes away. Um, yeah, there's, there's, this is all my refactoring stuff I want to do in the future. Um, like VR throws a wrench to, into everything I, I currently have because now I have to really consider uh, rendering. Um, one thing I'm really excited about doing is uh, King Sky's Planet. Uh, with nothing but procedurally generated meshes, I thought that that might be fun, challenging thing to do. And uh, like when with all said and done, uh, once I have like an actual little planet uh, that I can kind of maybe uh, I can kind of use that to do other things, like uh, doing collisions and a character controller. Like have like a little, have a little ball on the planet where I can kind of just walk around. Um, use that as an avatar to walk around the planet. Um, I also want to do, you know, maybe, you know, the character controller um, with the VR. So this way I can actually maybe, you know, walk on the planet with the VR headset on, which might be really awesome. Uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of things I want to do. Um, I definitely want to get into voxel chunks. Definitely want to do particles. Uh, there's some really great tutorials I've seen online that goes really in depth into terrains. I want to do that. Definitely want to do water. Definitely need a physics engine. There's a physics engine that exists, uh, but I want to do like a simple one, very simple. Um, you know, simple gravity and velocity is not that hard to do. Um, colliders, I need to look up how colliders work because I never really dealt with colliders. I've done like 2D colliders. I never, I don't know how 3D colliders work. So I need to look up how that works. Uh, skeletal, like I don't know if I mentioned skeletal animations. I really want to do that. Um, but I need more of the framework to be built. Uh, I like I need the transformation stack to be built before I can even do the skeleton um, animations, I believe. So, you know, like I said, there's certain prerequisites I need to do before I get there. Um, so, yeah. So uh, that's really the future that I'm kind of hoping for. Um, it's it's going to be slow because, I, again, this I'm like, what time is it? It's, it's 3 in the morning. And I spent a good amount, amount of tonight kind of just building that VR object. Last night, I prototyped it. Today, I kind of rewrote it with uh, as, a, as an instance uh, object with a promises. And it worked out pretty well. So, yeah, that's it. Um, see you guys in the next lesson. Uh, just comment if you have other possible ideas for future videos. Uh, any suggestions? Um, like I said, you, you basically kind of see where I'm thinking, where I'm kind of 
think about going. Um, if you guys have any better ideas how to handle certain, like the transformation stack, um, maybe some ideas about VR. Um, I don't know. Whatever you whatever you guys want to do, uh, you know, maybe I can squeeze in here and uh, and do it with you guys. Um, so yeah, uh, like and subscribe. Um, thank for, thank you all viewers uh, for you know coming and, and actually doing coming and viewing. So far, I made four bucks. That's awesome. Uh, I'm surprised. Uh, in two months, I made four dollars. That to me is kind of awesome. I don't know. I, I'm an idiot. So four dollars to me is a lot of money. Um, I guess. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm rambling. It's late. I probably should go to bed. Um, thanks for, for watching and, uh, see you guys in the next lesson.